Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to my Deluxe Case K unboxing for 2017. I'm super excited about this unboxing because there are some awesome cars inside. As you can see on the right here, one of them is Transberry Juice Cab. I was actually able to find it at Walmart last week, and there are two of him in the case. So I did find him early, but that's okay because I want to make sure I have one to keep in the package that's on a nice card and one to open as well. So I might return one. We'll have to see, or maybe I'll use it for a giveaway in the future, like a contest or something like that. But we'll get to the package. I want to open the case up first. Now if you're wondering, I got this case from Get Me Collectibles. He's an absolutely great seller. His contact information will be in the description below. He has an eBay store with cars ranging from 2006 all the way up to 2017. So a great selection. And if you want something specific or have a question about something, you can email him as well at getmecollectibles at gmail.com. So now let's get right into the case unboxing. There should be two Transbury Juice cabs, one Vinyl Toupee cab, one Charlie Cargo, one Craig Feister, and one Brian Fee Clamp, adding up to a total of six pieces. So as you can see, this is Cars Oversized Assortment K. You can disregard these numbers and letters right there. This is what is important, the letter that is at the end there, because that indicates what cars will be in this case exactly. So I have my box cutter. Let's get right to work here. All right, I'm super excited about this because I love new Piston Cup team members and we haven't really gotten any new Piston Cup team members in a long time. So I'm super excited about that Transbury Juice Cab. Final Toupee Cab was released before and I'll talk about all the previous releases, of course, when I open them all up and do the review of them loose. Sorry for the awkwardness here. I just don't want to come down hard on my table and like scratch that because my table is just a wooden table here. But I think we got it open all good. Let's, there we go. All right. Let's open it up like this. Looks good. Looks like I was correct about the contents. We'll take this one off from the top here. Now, I did a deluxe case unboxing. What was it like at the beginning of January or late December? It was late December. It was Deluxe Case F. I think it was F. I'm not entirely sure of the leather, but it had Craig Feister, Alexis Wilson, and the Fimic Missile with Breather. So this is a carryover from 2016. It's not a 2017 release. So just so you guys know, it's a carryover from 2016 because this is the first deluxe case for 2017. The rest of them are 2017 releases though. Starting with here, the vinyl toupee cap. Oh, it's like trying to squeeze them to get out of there. All right, this looks like it's on a perfect card. So that's awesome. Vinyl toupee cap. We'll just set them off to the side for now. I think, I don't know, I kind of want to flip the box, but I think I'll be able to do it like this. Charlie Cargo, another perfect card. That's awesome because I know my last deluxe case, the one that I was just talking about, case F, that was not a good case for packaging. The cards were pretty damaged, but looks like these are absolutely perfect. Same with Brian Fee Clamp here. Now I'll talk about him. There's a little bit of a story behind Brian Fee Clamp. Looks like we got some tissue paper here and here are the two Transberry Juice Cabs. Also look to be on a good condition card back. So that's awesome. I'm super excited about that. I heard them kind of banging around in there so I was a little worried about it but it looks like they are all good. So let's put the box aside now. We'll just put the box in the background actually so you guys can keep looking at it if you want. And now I guess we can just go through each of the packages and then talk about what it has to show on there. So I'll put this other Transberry Juice Cab off to the back there and let's just start with Transberry Juice Cab. So first off, I wanna say I'm a little disappointed that they didn't give him a unique name that's of course unique to him because if you guys remember last year, at the beginning of the year, they released a Nitroid Cab and look, 
They called him Eric Rodales or Rodales, however you want to pronounce it, but it was a unique name and I like that because it shows creativity and it's just a better name than Transbury Juice Cab. So I don't know why they didn't name him, but they named the one last year. It doesn't make much sense to me, but oh well. And of course, there are a lot of complaints because people want Mattel to release the entire hauler. Like, yeah, it would have definitely been nice if Mattel released the entire hauler for Transbury Juice here in the Walmart line. But... You know what, I'll take what we can get here because this is the first like, new team member for the Piston Cup in a long time. But yeah, it definitely would have been nice if maybe they released it in the Walmart exclusive line here. Like for example, here's the Grey Hauler from 2015, I believe, 2014. But yeah, you can see they released some haulers exclusive to Walmart. This year we have the Octane Gain Hauler, so it's definitely something they could do. At least in my opinion, I don't know what's restricting them necessarily, but whatever. Getting back to the car here, I love the art for him. Very, very nice. A great background as well for a brand new series, Piston Cup Pit Crew. Kind of following, or following in the footsteps of the World Grand Prix Pit Crew. Of course, deluxe tag right there. Number five out of six in the series. On the back, we can just see Transbury Juice Cab and Vinyl Toupee Cab, so nothing that we don't know of. The description reads, Piston Car Racers rely on their pit crews to get them out of the pit stop in record-breaking time and one tire closer to the Piston Cup Championship. And then we have some great art on here as well, showing Team Vinylene and Team No Stall along with Team Rev and Go in the background. Now, I don't know why Roman Dunes, which is the No Stall crew chief, doesn't have his headset on. Doesn't make any sense at all because, of course, in the movie he had his headset on, I believe at least. I mean, he should have because he's a crew chief. So, I don't know why for this art it's removed. Same thing with that Rev and Go crew chief in the background there as well. You can actually just see Mood Springs over there as well. So pretty cool art. I don't know why they removed the headsets though. So that's all for him. Moving on to Brian Fee Clamp. So yeah, this guy was actually released in a two-pack last year. I reviewed him. I actually did a case unboxing for that specific case. The link will be down in the description below if you're interested. So you might be thinking, wow, that's quite a ripoff if they included him in a two-pack with another car. Of course, that was Artie, and that sold for like around $8, and now you have this, which at Target stores sells for $7, and at Walmart stores it's $6. That's the typical deluxe price, so it's a ripoff for sure. However, I've heard reports that if you go to buy this guy at Target, it'll actually ring up for the single price of $377. So there, it's actually a pretty good deal. It's not a ripoff at all. Actually, at that price, it's just in the deluxe packaging because they probably couldn't fit it in a single packaging. So it's kind of weird. I don't know about the price at Walmart, but it's actually nice that they're ringing up at Target for only $377. So it's up to you. I still recommend buying the two pack just because, I don't know, it's kind of cool. You get both of them at once and you don't have to go hunting individually for each of them. But and a brand new series for the 2017 year. Piston Cup Reporters. Got nice art. Nice background. He's number one out of ten. Now this is actually interesting. And it contributes to what I was just talking about. About him ringing up at 377. Because usually deluxe numbers. The numbers for the deluxes are toward the end of the numbering system. So theoretically he could have been like 8 or 9 out of 10 and then usually the two packs are the last numbers. They would be 9 and 10 out of 10 or something. You guys know what I'm saying. Check out some of my previous videos. I've talked about this before. So the fact that he's number 1 and not like a typical number toward the end of the line also contributes to the fact that Mattel is recognizing him more as a single rather than a deluxe. So that's really cool actually. Here's Charlie Cargo in the Boot Camp series, another brand new series. I wish they kind of call it Sarge's Boot Camp, but Boot Camp is cool. Nice art for sure. Nice desert in the background. And uh, 
I don't even want to talk about this. Two out of two is the number for him, which makes absolutely no sense at all. So there, those are the two cars that will be in the series for 2017, Sarge and Charlie Cargo. The description for the series reads, at Sarge's boot camp, SUVs are trained in off-road navigation by the no-nonsense RV veteran himself. And that is Sarge, but I don't know why this series is only two cars. It could have released TJ or Murphy or Frank Pinkerton, which is this guy. So I don't know why they're making this a two-car series only. It is completely just silly in my opinion, but I don't want to drone on too long about the negatives and we'll just get to the picture here, which doesn't make sense either. It just shows the Radiator Springs Townies watching Doc and McQueen race. They really should have shown the boot camp. I mean, Sarge is not even in this picture. So I think Mattel kind of screwed up with this series big time, but oh well, at least we're getting Charlie Cargo. He's pretty rare because he was in that big Sarge's boot camp set. And I forgot to show the back of Brian B. Clamp, so we'll get to him right now. The description reads, Crowds of reporters gather to cover the Piston Cup race and answer the question race fans of all ages are asking, who will win the coveted Piston Cup? We got a picture there of McQueen surrounded by reporters. See, now that picture makes sense. And same thing with the Piston Cup picker. Those make sense. I don't know about boot camp, though. That doesn't really make sense. We can see Andrea Artie, who was the car in the two-pack with Brian, Curry Tur Turbowitz, Dash Boardman, Maddie, and Tim Rimmer. Tim Rimmer has been released already. Artie is in the next case after Tim Rimmer, but these actually have not been released yet. Oh, Maddie has. Maddie was in case R. So that's all for him. Moving on to Vinyl Toupee Cab. Also in the Piston Cup Pit Crew series, number six out of six, Transbury Juice Cab was five out of six, and same thing on the back as the Transbury Juice Cab, so nothing new to show there. And here is Craig Feister. I already talked about him in my review of him, but I'll show him again. Nine out of 12 in the Rusty's Racing series. On the back, we can see McQueen with sign, Andy Vaporlock, Fred, Donna Pitts, Michael Sparkler, Jonathan Wrenchworth, and the description reads, after the Diaco 400, Lightning McQueen meets and greets his excited Rusty's fans wanting to be just like him. So this was a great series for 2016, but is not, I repeat, not in 2017. It's just a carryover from the cases. So I'll be right back with the Transbury Juice Cap open, and the rest of them I already have loose, but I will review them anyway because I feel like they are pretty significant. So I will be right back with this guy opened up. Just a quick FYI, before we get into the reviews, here's a comparison between the Deluxe Brian Fee Clamp and the 2-Pack Brian Fee Clamp with Artie. So, I would totally recommend buying the 2-Pack if, in fact, you're presented with this one at a price that is $6 or $7 or anything higher than the single price of $3.77. But, seems like if you go to Target, you will be able to get this for $3.77 which is awesome. But just to show you guys, here is the two pack with Artie. Artie is being released this year as I already showed you guys because he is on the back of Brian Fee Clamp there. You can see how small the art is and it just got blown up for the deluxe there. But he is just kind of squeezing in this two pack. So I assume that he wouldn't have been able to fit in a single package. Not sure. We'll have to test it out when I review him and get him loose on the table. Then I'll show you guys a single in comparison to him. But here's the quick comparison between the two packagings. So let's start with Brian Fee Clamp. Now right off the bat, I have to mention that he's named after the director of Cars 3, Brian Fee. Brian Fee also worked on the other Cars movies, but John Laster directed those, and now Brian Fee has stepped in to direct Cars 3. So I find it awesome that he got a car named after himself, and there are actually a lot of Pixar employees who get cars named after themselves. 
For example, JW, the yellow pickup truck, this guy right here is named after J Ward, and J Schuster is named after J Schuster. And those are both big names in the Pixar company. And of course, Brian Fee is a big name as well as he's directing Cars 3. And of course, John Lasseter has John Lassatire. There are actually several John Lassatires in the movie and diecast as well. So I wanted to throw that in there as a neat little fact. Moving on to his appearance in Cars 1, he appeared at the Los Angeles International Speedway in that TV broadcasting booth or room, whatever you want to call it, with Artie. Now I assume these are the cars and their job is to kind of identify the unique and interesting scenes that the cameras are shooting to go on TV. Because of course, if you guys remember, Artie was actually the one to find Doc Hudson in the pit row and pretty much tell everyone that was there about him. And then of course it was broadcasted on TV as well. Brian Feeclam just seemed to be Artie's assistant. He didn't actually speak in the movie. Now as for his previous releases, I already talked about this. He was only previously released in that two pack with Artie back in 2016. Link to my review of it and case unboxing will be in the description below. Kind of funny that both times I review Brian Feeclamp, it's in a case unboxing video. But let's move on now to the review of him. He's actually a unique pickup truck. There are no other pickup truck models that are his same design. We have the circus pickup here. You can see that even though they're both white, they are drastically different in design. There are actually a lot of different pickup truck models in the Cars universe now. Back in 2008, 2009, you know, there was pretty much only one. I'll show that one in a moment here, but that is one that's probably the most drastically different. We have JW here, who's pretty different as well, but a pickup truck nonetheless. And of course he has a pretty big Pixar employee equivalent. I already talked about. Here's Duff Rex. This was like the original pickup truck design. And now I have to say these are the most similar because of course they're both white and they're both pickup trucks, but Brian Fee Clamp is a lot bigger. I wish they used this model pickup truck a little bit more. I feel like there would be some crew chiefs that would be Brian Fee Clamp's model and maybe some other cars in the movies as well. And now Dexter Hoover is the same model as Duff Rex as well. Brian Fee Clamp is a lot bigger. I would not mind if they use this Brian Fee Clamp model with a crew chief or something in the future because I just really, really like it. Maybe they'll use it for the Transberry Juice crew chief because we know that that will be coming this year as well. There's an Amazon link for it, so it's definitely coming sometime in the future. Now, I do have my tea back. This has been like a three video long affair. I remember in my Vladimir Trunkov review, I said that I lost it and I forgot to grab another one, but I finally have another one here. So I think it's a little bit longer. So I guess that's cool. The pointed stuff. Now, Brian Fee kind of has a little bit of a smile. He just kind of looks concentrated on something. He has his nice headset there so he can talk to people. Unfortunately, only this front half is metal. The back portion here, the bed is plastic. His license plate reads 32592 and the text above it is way, way, way too small to read. And here is the base if you're interested in that. Pretty cool. And that is all for Brian Fee Clamp. Of course, I will follow up with my promise of comparing him to a single package here. And actually he would not be able to fit in a single package. If you check it out here, they would have to make the blister larger, but they've never done that before. I know Hot Wheels in the Hot Wheels line, they kind of extend the blister for certain cars, but they've never actually done that in the cars line. You can kind of see there that he is a little bit wider than the blister, just by a little bit though. However, he probably wouldn't fit. Of course, lengthwise and height wise, he'd be fine, but you know, <laughs> It's not like Mattel is going to take any chances with that. If they think that they can put them into a deluxe, then they absolutely will. However, I think the reason why Target or whatever, I don't know why Mattel told them to price it at the single price. I don't know why they're doing that. To be honest, they could probably just sell it for the deluxe price and there wouldn't be 
any like big concerns or whatever, even though collectors would be a little upset about it. But it seems like they're doing it because it was in the two pack. And Mattel, you know, they're trying to be honest. I like that. You know, if that was the intention all in all, I don't really know how it happened because it just doesn't seem like something Mattel would do on their own accord. But whatever, we'll now go on to Charlie Cargo. Here's Charlie Cargo, who also appeared in the first Cars movie. He had a very, very small part, just like Brian Feeclamp. They're kind of like those background characters that you might notice, but you probably don't. I know I noticed Charlie Cargo just a little bit more than Brian Feeclamp. Now, he appeared during the ending credit sequence when Sarge was training the boot camp attendees. So, they're all lined up, and you can see that these SUVs have absolutely no experience in going in dirt or off-road at all. So, the attendees were, from left to right, TJ, Frank Pinkerton, Murphy, and Charlie Cargo. And as you can see, they all look pretty frightened. Murphy probably looks the least frightened of them all. And Sarge is just telling them what you gotta do, go on the dirt and everything. TJ is giving a whole speech about how he's gonna get dirt in his rims. And here's the cool sign that goes with it as well. This is a custom by Got Frank. If you're interested, by the way, I have them all set up with that little sign by them because it's pretty cool. And now, so yeah, I didn't get much screen time. Of course, Charlie didn't speak, but he looked just like this in the movie, very scared and frightened looking up at the sky. And it's kind of weird because on the art for him on the package, Charlie looks really happy and smiley, but maybe that's so it appeals to kids a little bit more because you probably don't want to have these like scowling characters on the card art because kids want to buy something that looks happy and friendly. So yeah, that's probably why they did that. But like I was talking about earlier, I don't know why they are not releasing these three from the boot camp. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. You create this brand new series called Boot Camp where it's like one specific scene in the movie, it can't be anything else, and then you only release two, Charlie Cargo and Sarge. It makes absolutely no sense to me. Maybe it's a glitch and there actually will be these cars in the series, but I kind of doubt that. I think these will be released somehow in the future. I don't know though, it's very, very confusing. Maybe Mattel got scared at all the deluxes. They're like, too many deluxes, we can only do so many. So I don't know, whatever. Let's not focus on the negatives. So getting to Charlie Cargo here, he was only previously released in a Toys R Us exclusive five pack with those other boot camp attendees and Sarge. It was back in 2009 in 2010 and that set has become extremely rare so for a lot of people this re-release is perfect for them because they didn't get it back in the day i did and this is the one that is actually from that 2009 five pack now his model unlike brian fee kind of is not unique however i guess you can make the argument that kind of is but it is overall generally the same as marco axelbender here and the Octane Gain and Crew Chief. There is a couple more, I believe, like Richard Clay and Kensington, but Richard is pretty much the same as Marco here because they're both security vans. And you can see that these are all pretty much the same model, but Charlie doesn't have any holes for the roof racks, the light bar, or the headset there as well. So they are a little bit different in that aspect, but as you can see, they're generally the same. They have the mouth plate there, unfortunately. And by the way, the 2017 release is exactly the same as this one here. There is no difference between them. As you can see, both still have that mouth plate, that crack between the body and the plastic mouth plate there, unfortunately. So there's no need to do a comparison because they are exactly the same. But so yeah, just further comparing these, they have the same rims, same windows and all that stuff. On the back here, we can see the same taillights and everything. It looks like their license plates are different though, which is awesome. Charlie's license plate is 65F83 and the text above it is a little too small for me to read and a little too blurry. Maybe on the new version, it's actually higher quality so I could read it. Mm, looks like it actually is higher quality, which is what I've been noticing lately on the new car's license plates, but it's still too small for me to read. I'd have to get like a magnifying glass or something like that. Here's the base if you're interested. 
pretty light. We just have a code up here and Disney Pixar China there, which is nice to see. And yeah, this is actually one of my favorite of the boot camp. I think my favorite would be TJ and then maybe this guy. I really like the lime green color to him and just that frightened expression. So yeah, that's pretty much it for Charlie. Just kind of a basic car that if he didn't look so scared, you can probably put him in the background of like a race stadium or something just as kind of one of those typical background characters but he definitely has his place in the movie moving on to the vinyl toupee cab you know what guys we should really give him an actual name i can't think of one off the top of my head right now so let me know in the comment section below what do you think we should name this guy because all cars definitely deserve a name same thing with the Transberry Juice Cab. I don't know why Pixar or Disney or whoever names the cars is neglecting the Vinyl Toupee and Transberry Juice Cabs. They could definitely name these guys after some Pixar employees or something, but whatever. Let's move on to Vinyl Toupee Cabs appearance in Cars 1. Wait a second. Yeah, no, he didn't appear in any of the movies and he's not going to appear in Cars 3 either. And you know what? It's okay. It's not a huge deal because we can assume that this guy exists in the world because the Vinyl Toupee Racer, you know, he has to be transported across races, you know, across the country between races somehow. So it's definitely logical that a Vinyl Toupee hauler exists. And you know what? The hauler, this thing right here, actually might have appeared somewhere in the background in the movie, but the semi cab himself here that is actually in the case, of course, the hauler was released back in 2010 and now we're just getting the cab not the full hauler but the hauler might have appeared in the movie but this guy the cab definitely did not so like I said this guy has actually not been officially released alone before of course he has been released with the trailer back in 2010 and that's how I got him and so now they're releasing him solo alone in this deluxe pack and he's actually different because of that. Whenever Mattel releases a semi cab just in a deluxe pack, it doesn't have the hole to connect the trailer. So you can kind of see through the packaging there that it's just filled in there. The blackness, it's just filled in. There's no gray hole for the hauler to attach to. I don't really know why they do that. They probably do it to cut back on cost, but the rest of him is exactly the same. He has that moth plate there. You can see the crack between the metal body and the plastic moth plate. The expressions are identical to each other. It would have been kind of nice if they changed that up like they did with the nitroid cab, but it's like not a huge deal. I know that's why I opened up the nitroid cab because it was pretty different from the one I had with the hauler. This one I probably won't open up. I might, but I don't have as much incentive with the nitroid one because the expressions are the same. But just getting to his features and details, he has the vinyl toupee logo up here, number 76 on either side of him, which of course is Krusty Rotors, aka vinyl toupee number 76's number. And he's actually getting released in case B, so you can keep your eyes out for him in stores coming pretty soon. On the back here, his license plate reads, 65F83 and the text above it is too small for me to read but it kind of looks like red something. It looks like the same above text as on Charlie Cargo and then he has the vinyl toupee mud flaps with a cool spring system in the back here with the smokestacks. Very nicely detailed. I've always liked cabs. Here's the base if you're interested by the way all the way from 2010 and these are actually the little holes that are on the bottom to connect to the packaging. So these actually may not be on the deluxes. Here, let me take a look. Yeah, they're not there. See those like kind of weirdly shaped holes? They're not there because those were used to connect to the packaging so it doesn't roll around in the big hauler packaging that I showed you guys earlier with the Danico hauler. So that's pretty much all for him. I don't really have anything else to say. Of course, we can compare him to the racer here. The colors do look to be the same, which is good. They're supposed to be. They look very nice together. And it's cool that they're both being released the same year. So, you know, it kind of raises up excitement for Vinyl Toupe and then people can get a couple members of the team. 
And we don't know if there will be a vinyl toupee crew chief, but I do have one that's from a backdoor Chinese seller. This is a factory custom here. It's not an official Mattel release. It really should have a headset like Brian Fee clamp, but it's not a huge deal because I only bought for $9 from a Chinese seller. And it actually looks pretty nice. The colors all fit in really cool. And then, of course, I'll throw in the trailer as well. But if you want to see my review, my full review, that is, of this hauler trailer, you can check out my Team Vinyl Toupee video. Blink for it will be down in the description below. She'll never notice, right, guys? So, yeah, it's actually a pretty cool slogan. And now let's move on to Transberry Juice Cab. So similar to the Vinyl Toupee cab, this guy doesn't appear in any of the Cars movies, but it's safe to say that he does exist in the Cars universe somewhere to transport Lee Revkin's the Transbury Juice Racer. Now, unlike the Vinyl Toupee cab, he hasn't had a trailer release in the past. This is the first release ever of any Transbury Juice cab one so ever. So, with the Vinyl Toupee cab, we had a full trailer hauler release back in 2010, and now we're getting a single deluxe semi release. With him, this is the only release. There's no hauler at all. Of course, like I said at the beginning of the video, it would have definitely been nice to get the full thing, but I'll take what we can get because this is actually really awesome. However, I do have one complaint with him right off the bat. His hat, or whatever you want to call it, the roof, absolutely does not match the rest of him at all and it doesn't make any sense so as you probably saw on the car there he is this dark purple color all throughout and now on the die cast here he kind of has like i don't know like a burgundy kind of like a pink light purple color there on his hat and then the rest of him is a dark purple and that just looks ugly and annoying. Same thing with the side view mirrors. They're a little off color as well. So I don't know what's going on with Mattel. This is kind of like the mouth plate deal. I know it's one of the main reasons why I don't like mouth plates because when the paint is like going on metal versus plastic, it tends to come out a different shade. And that looks to be what happened here. Of course, this is metal. This is plastic. So... I don't know why it's so drastically different and it's really disappointing to me. Here, let me give you guys an example. Here's Frank Pinkerton and you can see with the metal body and the moth plate there, this is the moth plate. The pink is pretty close in shade, but it's a little bit different, especially if you see it in person. But it's acceptable because the shades are very close. This is just, ugh. The shades are so far apart that it is just devastating to me. They have this awesome opportunity. They release this awesome new character that has never been released before, and they screw it up with that. I'm sorry for being so negative in this video, but there are a lot of errors that could have been fixed very easily with this case, this assortment of cars, starting with Charlie Cargo being in a two-car series only, and then moving on to this. Of course, Brian Fee Clamp being priced as 377 kind of makes up for some of this, but it's pretty bad in my opinion. So sorry for ranting there, but I'm pretty sure you guys would agree with me. You probably want something that matches and actually looks like it does on the car that rather than something that kind of looks like a bunch of random parts put together that are different colors that don't even match. But I'm not going to say one more word about it though. I like the expression. The expression is good. Nice and smiling. We have the Transberry Juice logo up top there. Number 63 on either side, of course. Lee Redkin's number there. And on the back here, we have the Transberry Juice mud flaps there and his license plate reads, if we could focus in on them, E3271. Not entirely sure if that number has been used before. Of course, Mattel is notorious for reusing license plate numbers, but I don't know about that one, so I can't say either way. And of course, it does have the filled hole there so it can't connect to any other haulers unfortunately. It's kind of weird because usually one of these springs is actually colored. For example with Vinyl Toupe here it's colored to be the same color like pink there. So it's kind of weird that both of them are black. I don't know why they did that but it's not a huge deal. It's not as big a deal as the mismatched color. I'm actually checking to see if the Deluxe here has yeah. They have the uh, mismatched color there with the springs, so it's kind of weird. 
with this one, but that's a very, very small, minuscule detail. Now comparing in the Lee Revkins in color, they look eh, kind of similar. Lee Revkins looks to be a little bit darker than the Transbury Juice Cab, but I wouldn't really say anything about that, especially that now we have this color difference that's way more noticeable than the color difference between these two in general here. And same thing with the Vinyl Toupe uh, Crew Chief. There's a backdoor one factory custom of the Transbury Juice one here, but like I said earlier, there's an Amazon listing for a Transbury Juice Crew Chief, so it's safe to say that we will get a release of him this year, which will be awesome. I like how they kind of stick with like one team and they release a couple of them per year. Like for example, last year in the World Grand Prix Pit Crew Series, they did where there was always a pity there was a crew chief for the same racer. Giuseppe Motorsi and Alex Makino, both Francesco releases. Autobahn, Max Schnell's pity. So, you know, I like how they kind of stick with that. It looks like they're going to do a similar thing in this series, although it's only six cars and we only have four to go or three unknowns if you count the Transbury Juice Cab. So a little unfortunate there, but the whole team does look nice together, especially from a distance when you can't notice that color change, but whatever. Oh well, that is all for this review guys. I hope you guys did enjoy it. I do apologize for being negative, but this is a review where I share my honest opinion with you guys about the releases and I'm not a huge fan of some of the things they did, but you know, what are you gonna do? I'm happy that we got a new member of a team, so that's pretty good, you know. Overall, all in all. Let me know in the comment section below which one of these is your favorite, despite the terrible color difference between the hat and the body there. I'll have to go with him as my favorite because he's a brand new release, but if we were back in 2010, I think Vinyl Toupee Cab would be my favorite, and he probably would end up being my favorite a couple months from now, maybe a couple years, because after the whole new feeling of excitement wears off, then you can kind of look at them in retrospect and really determine which one is the better release. And of course, if you want to throw Craig Faster in here as well, he's pretty awesome as well. I like him a lot. Mattel did a great job with him, but this is a reissue for him, a carryover from 2016. So let me know what you guys think about that in the comment section below. I will see you guys next time for another video. Pretty happy that I've been able to get daily videos out for like four days now. Hopefully we can carry on that tradition for at least one more day. So I'll see you guys maybe tomorrow for another video. Bye now.